Hi, welcome to, to Fairham, where this next SCBA reflection is coming from. As I record this reflection, I'm very aware that this week we're kind of in the transition of seasons. Uh, we're moving from the, the spring now into the summer. You wouldn't believe it looking at the clouds and a little bit of rain that's in the air at the moment, but, uh, but that, that is the case. Uh, but also this week we've seen the easing of restrictions and it feels like we're coming into a new season of ministry. Many of our churches are now beginning to meet again, activities are beginning to take place. So as we do so, I thought it'd be good just to reflect on the different seasons of ministry. And I found myself this week thinking about the person of Elijah. And when you read 1 Kings 17 through to 19, I think there are four very clearly identifiable seasons that Elijah finds himself in. He finds himself in the season of drought that we could say we've kind of been through, not in the same way as Elijah, but we have been through a season of, of drought in ministry, into a season of victory on Mount Carmel, and then on to a season of retreat where he seeks out God and hears the whisper of the Lord's voice. And then on to what I would call a season of succession, where God reappoints him, reanoints him, resends him to uh, appoint and anoint others to continue the work of Yahweh. In 1 Kings 17, we find Elijah in this season of drought. Now, I'm not suggesting that the season of COVID that we've been through is anything like the season of drought that Elijah and the people of Israel went through. But there has been a sense of drought for us, not so much from, from food and water, but from relationships, from the opportunity to, to meet with people, to meet with friends and family. And, and many of us have felt that deeply. As you look at the story of Elijah, what you discover is that God provides. Elijah finds himself in the Kerith ravine where uh, water is supplied by the spring, but food is supplied by ravens. I have never heard of birds feeding humans. It's normally round the other way. And when the stream dries up, Elijah goes to be with this widow who has nothing. And yet they faithfully trust God and he miraculously provides for them. And they are looked after and cared for. He provides and God is faithful in the season of drought. But I want to also note that in that season, there is, a se there is a moment of death. And we've lost loved ones, haven't we? So many of us have lost loved ones, friends or possibly family members. And the son of the widow dies. But what we also discover is the promise of resurrection because, you know, again, in, in miraculous power, God brings that lad back to life again. And we can trust that God in a period of doubt has everything in control. He, he is able to provide for all our needs. He is always faithful in the period and we, and we can testify to that. But also in the season of drought, there is the promise of the resurrection. As Elijah comes out of this season of drought, what we discover that he enters into what can be described as a season of victory on Mount Carmel. A passage that we, we know really well, probably one of the most preached on passages from the Old Testament. But actually, before he gets to Mount Carmel, you could describe the period, the season, as a season of confrontation. Where he sees the power of God at work, there is that sense of confrontation where the light of Jesus is advancing. The darkness will always confront it. But what strikes me particularly in the Elijah story is Elijah's faithfulness to believe that God will answer his prayer. I think it was me, you know, I may have got to the point of building the altar, but the point of praying the prayer, <laughs> I think at that point I may have hesitated and wondered, God, are you really going to do this? But it seems that Elijah doesn't. He really believes and trusts that God will fulfill his word. And I wonder where that came from. And I wonder whether actually it was the season of drought that informed him of God's constant faithfulness, that he could trust God completely and actually understood the will of God so much so 
that when he got to Mount Carmel, he was able with faithfulness and boldness and courage to pray and ask God to pour out fire from heaven. And so we see, as he comes out of the season of drought into the season of victory, the power of God at work through Elijah. Elijah doesn't find himself in the place of victory very, very long. I, I would have liked to, if I was Elijah, liked to stay there much longer than he did. Instead, actually, he recognises and feels the emotion of the confrontation even more. It intensifies and that season of confrontation does not disappear. You know, when we are in a period of what seems success, it doesn't mean that the battle has ended. In fact, actually, sometimes the battle intensifies. And suddenly Elijah feels his vulnerability and his fragility and he flees. He enters a season of retreat. I don't think there was anything wrong with that season. I know that God says to him, asks him that question, you know, what are you doing here when he arrives at Mount Horeb? But I don't think that question is a question of condemnation or even a suggestion of failure that he shouldn't have been there. I think actually what it was is God giving him the opportunity to express his feelings and his emotions and his fears and his vulnerability. You know, there are times and seasons when we need to be in retreat, we need to go to those places where we might hear God again. In fact, God sustains Elijah through the journey to Horab and then in grace and gentleness speaks into his life in that whisper, that quiet whisper of his voice. And so for many of us, you know, maybe we are entering into a season where we need to find that place of retreat. And the 40 days is, is an interesting number. It comes up many times in scripture. Maybe that's the kind of time that we need. A time to retreat, a time to travel, a time to be with God, a time to, to move away, not to hear the noise of life, but to hear the quiet whisper of God's voice in our life, restoring us, re-energizing us, bringing us rest, reappointing us, resending us, recalling us, and sending us back to complete the ministry that he has called us to. As Elijah goes into that season of retreat, God restores him, uh, re-energizes him, gives him rest, uh, renews him ready for a new season and, and I believe in that moment God sends Elijah into a new chapter, a new season of his ministry and I would describe that season as a season of succession. He is called, and you reread it in 1 Kings 19, he's called to go and find certain people to do certain roles and to anoint them for those roles, particularly Elisha. For some of us, you know, as we've come out of COVID this season, God is saying to us, you know, one of our primary tasks is to enter a chapter season of succession, to go and find those that he is calling for the future, to recognise that we're not on our own. I mean, Elijah, that was his complaint, wasn't it? I'm the only one. How many times have we said that to God? We are not the only ones. God has many people that he is calling into ministry. They may not look like us and they may be different to us, but his Holy Spirit is upon them. And maybe our new task is with his help to identify those people, to anoint them, appoint them, and to encourage them into the ministry that God has called them to. I find these four seasons so helpful. The season of drought where we see the provision of God and there is moments of sadness, but also the promise of resurrection. The season of victory where we see the power of God at work, overcoming the power of darkness. The season of retreat, where we might run from God, but discover that we run straight into his arms. And by his quiet whisper of his, his voice, he might restore, renew us and resend us into a new chapter and maybe for some of us that chapter is to go and find the others that God is calling and encourage them into their ministry. May you know, may you know God's provision. May you 
be reminded of the power of the resurrection. May you be reminded of God's huge power over darkness. May you know what it is to be restored, rested, revitalised and renewed in him. And may you know the rescinding of God to whatever that ministry might be. And may you fulfil it well for his glory.